Is it true that women generally have more type 1, so slow twitch, slow to fatigue muscle fibers, and fewer type 2, this fast twitch, fast to fatigue muscle fiber, relative to men? Maybe. There's some data to to support that claim, but it's single biopsy measures always from the vastus lateralis, so always from your thigh. So can we say that it's true for all of the muscles in the body? No. When we look at the the differences that are reported, they're fairly small. So we're, it's not like women have 70% type 1. We're talking about the difference between, you know, maybe it's 45, 55 or something like that and uh, as a split. But importantly, we know that muscle fiber transitions occur due to training. So if we look at muscle fiber type in an elite marathon runner, they are going to have more type 1 fibers because that is a training specific adaptations. If we look at a elite Olympic weightlifter, they are going to have the opposite. And so it's not good or bad. And it's not like we need to be striving to correct it one way or the other, because these are two examples of people who are really elite in their sport, but they're different sports. And so the muscle adaptations we get from the training we do, and there's probably a genetic component as well, you know, who knows, was it that they are elite because they were born with fiber type distribution that propelled them to be better in the sport or were there fiber type transition that occurs at a, as a function of this type of training maybe it's both we don't know but the point being the argument i hear is since there is this discrepancy we should be doing a, a type of exercise to try to correct it or try to bring it back so that it's half and half and there's no rationale for doing that. It's not like if you were 50-50, you are a healthier person or you will live longer. What we know is that these these dictate performance and these are the transitions are occurring due to how we train. But outside of performance, is there any merit to the idea that type 2 muscle fibers, so these fast switch, are particularly important for the speed at which you can kind of produce force and generate force and power and that being important in the context of longevity and, and reducing risk of falls. I think that's where I've seen this come up most is that, okay, as we age, and this is my understanding and feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but men and women, all of us, as we age, we get a, a kind of shifting of type, less type to muscle fibers, fast twitch, and, and, and more relative type 1 slow twitch, and it affects our ability to generate force quickly, which could be important in terms of like reaction time and catching yourself in a, in a fall. Is that accurate, that that happens broadly for men and women? And if so, is that just a case for everyone as they're aging, doing strength and, and high intensity training to stimulate those type two fibers? Yeah. So we know that we lose muscle mass, muscle strength and muscle power with age. Is it due specifically to changes in fiber type? No, we don't have that. We know that we're being too sedentary or maybe we get sick. And when we look at the fiber types in people who are ill or sedentary, they actually have a lot of hybrid fibers. They're not these pure fibers. And so that's the the outcome that you get when you have it, you're in a disease state or you're extremely sedentary. So yes, we need to all be doing strength training for a variety of reasons. We don't want to lose muscle. We don't want to lose strength. We don't want to lose power. All of those are going to contribute to our long-term physical function. And if we are able to incorporate some balance exercises into our training, let's say you're doing a walking lunge, then that's also going to help with fall prevention. And you know, if we don't fall, we don't fracture, that's important for bone. So I think your take home message about what's important is spot on. The why behind the what is an is interesting and I would say we don't have all of that information 
I mean, frankly, we don't even have all the information about why we're losing muscle, period. We can say, is it how much of it is is age? How much of it is inactivity? How much of it is a combination of both? What we know or, you know, anabolic resistance, but what we know is is what you can do about it. And so I think it's it's really important for people to hear that this is the the way that we address it and this works no matter how late in life you start, even if you're someone who's never lifted weights and you're 75, you can still reap the benefits of training. The average person is starving their microbiome every single day and in turn, robbing themselves of their best health. Enter 38 Terra's Daily Microbiome Nutrition or DMN. What's DMN you ask? Well, who better to explain than 38 Terra founder and gastroenterologist, Dr. Will Bolsowitz. Thanks, Simon. DMN is a daily prebiotic blend we created to nourish your gut microbes with exactly what they need to thrive. We used rigorously studied ingredients like actazin kiwi fruit powder and solenol resistant starch, both of which have been shown in clinical research to feed the beneficial bacteria, improve regularity, and support digestion and immune health. Of course, we've left out the sugar and the unnecessary fillers that you find in so many other products. And what you end up with is the most complete prebiotic that I know of on the market today. In fact, this is the product that I've always wanted for my patients. Support your gut health today in the most practical, science-backed way with DMN. Simply head to 38terra.com. That's the numbers 38tera.com and use the coupon code, the proof at checkout for 10% off. 